National Defense Forum. She's joined by Global Foundry CEO Thomas Caulfield. Welcome to you both. Morgan? Kelly, thank you so much. And Tom, it's great to be sitting here with you. Um, you know, Kelly just talked about defense stocks, but semiconductors, key part of the national security conversation. And it really speaks to this intersection, this growing intersection that we're seeing between technology, industrial policy, and supply chain, and national security. Absolutely. Um, you, you think about how critical technology, in particular semiconductors, are to supply chain security, uh, economic security, and the intersection with national security. And I think that all comes together in a conference like this. Mm. You just uh, recently got the direct funding, the $1.5 billion from the CHIPS Act. So how do you put that to work now, and, and what does that reflect in terms of this broader conversation? Yeah. So a little context. You know, the CHIPS funding is a, 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 a part of the government co-investment with industry to bring semiconductor manufacturing back into the U.S. Remember, there's the investment tax credit that's a, a big part of that program, too, that has that dollars come in. Look, for, for GF, it's about expanding our manufacturing footprint in the U.S., this, the CHIPS bill. The first part of it is to uh, bring a broader set of technologies into our existing facility in uh, upstate New York and modernizing our 200-millimeter facility in Vermont. And then as the demand in our industry really starts to uh, pick up again in the uh, auto industry and the smart mobile device industry will then add new uh, factory floor space and create more capacity there. So this is a journey, not not something that you know ends in, and begins in 2025 and ends in 2025. This is a, a three to five year program. Do you think the U U.S. can really truly do this? Stand up a homegrown, vertically integrated supply chain for chips manufacturing here. And, and I ask that knowing that. The foundry business at Intel, for example, has been one of those challenges, and that's, that's a company that's been going through its own, own strife. Yeah, I think the, the United States can and the, United, and, the, and the government can. What's important is this can't be a start and stop. Uh, our industry is 50 to 60 years old, so it's a relatively new industry. It, you know, it, it just didn't happen overnight where we have a high geographic concentration of semiconductor manufacturing. That's not in the U.S., and this is going to take a decade to correct it. Uh, but the key is to start, make steps, but not, you know, one day it's in fashion, the next day it's not. And I think it's important that, that the, through administrations that this continues because it is a priority for our nation. Is that what you're expecting with the incoming Trump administration, that this type of policy, CHIPS Act, uh, and maybe a 2.0, that, that that's where we go from here? Yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely confident in it. And, and I could say that because... The CHIPS bill that we, we look at today really started in President Trump's first administration uh, with uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, Treasury Secretary uh, Mnuchin. They all started this. And as it built momentum, administrations changed. It, it got called different things, but it's, it was a, a program that started uh, you know, before 2020, and here we are today. So I think it transcends all of this because it's back to what you started. National security, economic security, and supply chain security, we need domestic capability here. Geopolitical landscape has been very, very tense. Uh, you have operations here in the U.S., but all over the world. Not in Taiwan or China, though. Uh, and, and I wonder that diversification away from those key hubs has actually meant that you've been fielding more incoming business. Uh, the answer is yes. I think it's becoming more and more important. You know, we, we talk about the geopolitical risk. There's also geological risk. Uh, of, of having such a high concentration of this important capability in Taiwan. Um, you know, Mother Nature could, could you know, create you know, a problem for us. So any like, single points of failure in any business are problematic. And so one of the, the, you know, the things about GF is we're in Singapore, the United States, and Europe, and very broad geographic footprint. It takes single points of risk uh, uh, out of view. Many of our technologies we can source from you know, one to three of the different continents I talked about. And I think it's becoming a more and more of a, a requirement for our industry to make sure there's better resiliency and uh, less concentration. And finally, just a macro question for you. What are you seeing across the business right now? We know that there's been continued to be softness in industrial and auto, but you look at ISM manufacturing this week, that seems to be trending in the right direction. I find myself having more conversations about maybe at least here in the U.S. an inflection uh, in terms of the industrial part of the economy. Are you starting to see that? And I guess how do you balance that against the rest of the portfolio tied to AI and, and things <laughs> of that nature? Yeah, I, I, look, 
this has been a really long cycle other than you know, the, the AI boom in the data center. It's been a long cycle for industry in uh, a little bit of the doldrums, the low end of things. We are seeing things pick up. And it's because of the content that's required. Uh, automobiles, the units sold per year don't have to go up for our industry to grow because the more and more silicon content. Uh, it's a growth engine for GF because of a lot of the focused development and technology we've brought to the marketplace to serve the auto industry. So not only cars are using more silicon content, GF's won more sockets and more applications in the car. So it's one of the things we're seeing is, is propelling our business. Uh, you know, the industrial IoT, I think, has a, a little ways to go. It's still a little bit soft. Um, but it, what will happen is as, as companies use more and more of AI, they're going to need to refresh that capability, and it's going to start in the industrial space.